thank you for this day that you have made, for this new day, because it is a new day. And we say thank you. We bless you, Jesus. We give you praise. Thank you for the privilege to be co-laborers with you, to come before your presence, to worship out of it, to be your people, your holy people, to cry out to you. Thank you, Father. Lord, we have come today. Let us find mercy. Show us mercy tonight. Show us mercy, Father. Give us grace tonight. Transform us by the power of your word. Show us your heart. Show us your face. Let your face shine upon us. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name of bread. Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Good evening. Welcome to church. You can have your seat. Welcome to Bible study. It's good to be in church this evening. And we thank the Lord for the privilege He has given us to be in His presence. Because we know it's always a privilege. Because whenever we come, He always blesses us. So we are still on our long series, Thriving in the Midst of Famine. Glory to Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. So, we've been looking at a particular strand or a string from that series which I called the power we focused at. If you still remember very well, the power we focused at, where I looked at Matthew, we began to look at Matthew chapter 6 from verse 22 to 25. So, let's read again. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 22. We've been looking at the power of a focused at under our theme, our series driving in the midst of famine. So Matthew chapter 6, verse 22 to 25, the Bible says, Jesus Christ speaking, says, The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thine whole body shall be full of light. Right? Thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Okay? Verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either we hate the one and love the other, or else we hold on to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, verse 25. Take, therefore I say unto you, take note of your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink. Now, therefore your body, what you shall put on, is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. Okay. Yeah, go back to verse 22. So don't forget, we are still on verse 22 of this scripture. Hope you are not forgotten. <laughs> Yeah, you have forgotten. <laughs> ah, God is so deep. It's not my fault, though. I can't, I can't, I can't deny His grace. Praise Jesus. We are still on verse twenty-two. You forgotten? The power we focus that that focus on Jesus. Are you following me? Will make your life beautiful. You remember? Uh-huh. The, the mother remembers. Are you following me? That focus on Jesus will make your life work. To make your life beautiful. It will say to you. You remember that that's where? This is where we traveled from. We've been to Psalms, been to Hebrews, been to Canada, been to Australia. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. God is so beautiful. And so, he's so, God is massive. Like, he's deep. Like, we've been on this verse 22. Like, like I just realized, when I was preparing, I was ah, ah. It was at Paris. We, we just finished. It took us to Matthew chapter 16 and 26, right? We just finished chapter 16, the few verses you looked at. Where it says that uh, if any man will come after me, right? Let him deny himself, okay? And that uh, if any man tries to save his life, he's going to lose it. That boy, if you lose it for my sake, you're going to gain it. So we've gone so far. Huh? But we are still... No, we are looking at Matthew chapter 6, 22 to 25. So we are back to verse 22. I just want to, I need you to, to remember where we started from. Hmm? Uh-huh. Praise Jesus. That focus on Jesus will make your life work. Will make your life work. That you should not be afraid to definitely make your life work. Okay? So this now led us, this verse now led us to somewhere in Psalms. If you remember, two Psalms. One in, is in chapter, there's chapter 8 and chapter 16. Let me see. 
Glory to Jesus. Don't be afraid though. You have come to a great church. <laughs> Praise Jesus forevermore. Even me say, when God is talking to me about this thing, I don't, I don't used to believe that. This is to be. I don't used to know. Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Are we still together? Amen. Glory, glory to Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise the living Jesus. Are we still together? Are you sure? Amen. We've looked at Psalm 16 verse what? Uh, I know. This is where I'm going back to today. But we've looked at another Psalm. But let's quickly go back here. So because this is where we are going back to today. So these scriptures are taking us to the book of Psalms 16. Right? From verse 8 to 11. Don't forget again that we stopped at verse 10 in that Psalms. Have you forgotten? <laughs> we've not looked at verse 11. You understand? No, my teaching is that I plan is like, it's not, I'm not making a mistake. It's planned. I know where I'm going. You understand? It's a journey. So we are still, you people have forgotten. It's a curriculum. You understand? So I can't miss any class. Like, I didn't forget. It's well planned. So we've, we stopped at, for that will not leave my soul in hell. Do you understand? And now without so far, I only want to see curriculum that the man must not be afraid of what? Of death. You remember what we began to talk about the law of resurrection. Uh huh. This is why that was why I took to the law of resurrection. She and Kawe Inja. We soon write a sample. In this day, we are making handouts. There is handout now. Audio. All the messages. Go and listen to them. That's your handout. We will write a If you fail, I'll deal with you. Amen. So we are investing of these scriptures. That, the, that I said the apostle that the psalmist says he will not leave my soul in hell are you following me that God did not promise that we will not go to hell that we will not go to the grave are you following me that he not say we will not partake of death and I explain what that means things getting spot and all of that are you following me Child, hallelujah but that the assurance is that our soul will not be left in the grave that he will always come for us are you following me that there is a route from the grave to glory. That was what took us to Hebrews chapter 2. You remember? Praise Jesus. So don't think I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Praise God forevermore. You are in trouble with this, your pastor that God has given you. <laughs> Positive trouble. Good one. You will understand the scriptures and leave it out. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we are back here. So go to verse 8. Wait, yes. So don't forget where we stopped last week that the believer has to, to be sold out. That's what we've been looking at. Sold out to the will of God, right? And if any man will come after me, he should deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. If you try to save your life, you are going to lose it. Are you following me? And if you, if you lose it for my sake, you will gain it. So let's come back to this scripture that has been taking us everywhere. So again, Psalm 16 verse 8. Don't forget the power of a focused act. That's what I'm still looking at. Are you following me? Now don't let Satan lie to you that focus on Jesus is, is, is a waste of time. That is not a what? A waste of time. That eventually your life will work. That your destiny will thank you. Are you focused on Jesus? So let's read. I have said the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Okay? Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. Father, we receive utterance, we receive entrance, we receive help tonight in Jesus' name. My flesh also shall rest in hope. Okay? Verse 10. For thou will not leave my soul in hell. Hmm? Neither without suffer the only one to see corruption. So the believer can live a life that defeats death. Okay? 
The believer can live a fearless life that is not afraid of death. Are you following me? So Satan cannot threaten the believer with death, with his spoiling and all of that. that that's what we've been looking at. Okay? So the, the, the believer is sure because he's focused on the Lord. Verse 8. Do you understand? So because he's focused on the Lord, he's sure that even if the grave happens, even if death happens, the Lord will come for him. Are you following me now, my friends? And you have to have this assurance that the Lord will come for you even in the grave. Are you with me now, my friends? Neither without suffer than only want to see corruption. Are you following me? That it will never be destroyed. Yeah, you will not be annihilated. Are you following me? That this your life will not what? Be destroyed. That because you have said the Lord always before you, it may look like things are going bad, going bad. He said, but you will never enter the point of destruction. That you will not be annihilated. Are you following me my friends? Are you following me? Are you with me? You will not allow your only one to see corruption because you see, as you focus on Jesus, things will look like they are getting destroyed. Are you following me? To look like your life is not working, like everything is just crashing before your face. Are you following me? But it cannot crash because it will not suffer your only one to what? To see decay, to see corruption. Are we together now, my friends? It's like Paul when he was saying in Second Corinthians chapter four from verse seven that we are we are crushed down but not destroyed and all of that. You understand? There can be a crushing, but we won't be destroyed. Are you following me? Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Are we ready now? So at this point, the psalmist was not speaking because things were working perfectly. I told you. Are you following me? And focus on the Lord had strengthened his heart so much. Are you following me? That he was not even afraid of the grave. Praise Jesus forevermore. That anything can happen. That anything can spoil. Are you following me? Because for us, death is not, is not the end. Because there is the law of resurrection. Because for us, after death, there is a resurrection. So that even when everything appears to have spoiled, appears to have crashed, are you following me? We can be, we, there can be a new beginning. Are you following me? Shout hallelujah. So at this point, the experience of the psalmist, are you following me? Even though he was focusing on... God, are you following me? Was that of one who has gone to the grave? Bad experiences. But he was so sure that the Lord will not leave his soul in the grave. Are we ready now? Don't forget, we've been saying that all of these experiences eventually, the plan of God is that it should culminate in glory, in a glorious life. Okay, so that's what we want to look at again from these scriptures now and close this Psalm 16. Are we together now? Praise Jesus forevermore. So, for thou will not leave my soul in hell, in the grave. Neither will thou suffer the only one to see corruption in hell. Verse 11. Thou will show me the path of life. Are you ready now, my friends? Praise God. Guys, you must have this assurance. Assurance. You must have what? You must have this assurance. Are you following me? For thou will not leave your, thou will not what? Leave my soul in the grave. Neither will thou suffer your only one to see corruption. Thou will. So, I'm in the grave, okay? I've gone to the grave, okay? It's like corruption is coming, okay? Are you following me? But you will not leave my soul in the grave. And you will not allow me to see corruption. Guys, are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing me? So I have an experience of the grave. A death experience. Are you following me? I've explained that already. I've gone, gone and listened to the teachings. Are you following me? 
I have an experience that's looking as if corruption is, is nearby. As if complete destruction, complete annihilation is nearby. Are you following me? But now it says, in the midst of all of this, you will show me the path of life. Are we together? Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. I thy right hand their pleasures forevermore. Friends, are we ready now? You see, this is the end point of verse 8. I have said the Lord always before me. What it will eventually lead to, are you following me? Is that you will be shown what? The path of life. Are we together now? Are we together? So, God has a plan to show his children, are you following me? Those who have set their focus on him, he has a plan to do one thing. And what is that thing? To show them the path of life. Are you following me now, my friends? Are you with me? Thou will show me the path of life. Are you ready? Come. So this is me in the grave. This is me as though corruption has come. Are you following me? He now says, you will show me. Now, that show me is now is not like see, see, see. You will show me. You will lead me. You will take me and lead me in the path of life. Are you hearing me now? Life and the grave, do they resemble? Oh, are you getting it now? Are you following me? Yeah, you are getting it. He's in the grave. Are you following me? He's like, he's expressing corruption. But he says that something is certain. Because even in that grave, and in that experience, as though corruption is coming, there is something he's doing constantly. What is he doing? Is focusing on the Lord. It now says eventually that the end is that you will show me the path of life. Guys, that situation is not permanent. Are you hearing me? Your suffering is not forever. Are you following? That means this guy will not stay long in the grave. Are you with me? It's not like He's in the grave. Now say, oh, yeah, see the path of life. Oh, yeah, see yeah, the path of life. No, 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 no. You will show me. You will lead me. You will make me walk. You will lead me out of the grave and lead me in the path of life. Are you with me now, my friends? Guys, can I talk to you? If you focus on Jesus, your hardship have an expiry date. Uh, are you hearing me now? Guys, say, go me. I'm telling you the truth. Oh. And I'm very, my words, I'm, I'm sure of what I'm saying. I'm very clear about it. That's why I'm using the right words. I didn't say because you are a believer, your hardship has an expiry date. Did I say that? I didn't, did I say because you are going to church that your hardship has an expiry date? I said, if you focus on Jesus, because it's from verse 8. If you focus on Jesus, I'm telling you, my friends, your hardship does what? Has an expiry date. Hmm. If you focus on Jesus, your sufferings have an expiry date. Because you see, the grave, are you with me? The grave is not the plan. The grave is not the destination. Are you following me? The grave is merely a bus stop. But Satan thinks that once you go to the grave, he thinks you are finished. Are you with me? But God says, right there from the grave, I'm going to show you. I'm going to hold you. I'm going to take you on a tour. I'm I'm going to take you on a journey on the path of life. That means you will eventually leave the grave and begin to walk in a path called the path of life. That's what I'm I'm here to tell you this evening. Are you ready, my friends? Are you sure you are ready? So, this man that was in the grave, are you following me? 
since all these days that people have written off. Are you following me? But right there in the grave, he kept looking at Jesus. He kept his heart on Jesus. The psalmist says one day is coming that soon and very soon, the Lord will hold him by the hand, lead him out of the grave, and lead him in a path called the path of life. Are you following my friends? Are we still together? Praise God forevermore. Guys, if you focus on Jesus, your sufferings, your hardship, have an expiry date. Are you following? Job, in all his experience of grave, and as if corruption was happening to him, are you following me? He kept his focus on God. And this happened to him. God took him out. Are you following me? That God now multiplied what he eventually had. That his end was now better than his beginning. Are you following me? Because what resurrects is always higher than what died. Guys, this is not yet you. The world has not seen you. You you have not even seen yourself. (laughs) Are you with me? You think you know how to dress. You don't know how to dress yet. Let the money come. <laughs> this is not you. You think a banocra is your best food? You are lying. <laughs> if you have to say what is your best food, I like, like Gary and Granot. It's a lie. It's because you are still in the grave. <laughs> because you see, the grave will limit you. Are you, with, are you with me? The grave will place a restriction upon you. Because when you are in the grave, they are going to tie you with clothes like Lazarus. Are you following me? Oh, friends, are you with me? The grave will keep you small. The grave will keep you static. The grave will keep you on one spot. Oh, but when Jesus says it's time to walk in the path of life, that's when you hear Lazarus comfort. <laughs> are you with me? And once that arose come for, because he's now to be led in a part of life, he said, lose him and let him go. Lose him. Are you following me? Hey, friends, are you ready? He said, lose him and what? Let him go. Let him now begin to walk in that part of life. You see, when this happens to you, when they begin to show you the part of life, are you following me? What are the power to hold you down? We no longer have the power. There will be absolute freedom in every area of your life. Like absolute freedom. Things you couldn't do before, you were able to do more abundantly. Things you couldn't afford, you can afford that kind of life. Because what was keeping you small was the grave. What was keeping you stagnant was the grave. Can you hear me? What was keeping you static was the grave because once you're in the grave you are bound with grave clothes you cannot move are you following me what was not making your life move forward was the grave are you with me now my friends shout hallelujah praise god forevermore but he says that even in the grave in those toughest of situations that i kept my focus on the lord and that because of that he will eventually show up. Are you following me? And when he shows up, he's not coming to console me in the grave. Are you with me? When he shows up, he's not coming to console me in my hardship. He's not coming to console me what I'm going through. He's coming to lead me out of it. Friends, God is coming to lead you out of your predicaments. Are you following me? God is coming to lead you out of your hardship. <laughs> God is coming to lead you out of your sorrow, out of your suffering. Are you following me? Because for the child of God, are you following me? With emphasis on focus on the Lord. Can you hear me? The grave is not the destination. It might pass through the grave. Are you following me? For the child of God, the grave is just so a capas. Are you with me? Those tough times, those hardships, those sufferings, our capas, you are passing through. You are not, it's not where you will die. You think you will die in those problems. You think you will die the way you are. I think you will die small. No! That's why I'm teaching you to focus on the Lord. Because that is what will bring it to pass. 
That's why your heart must not shake even when the things are tough. Because if your heart shakes, if you keep your focus away from the Lord, if you focus, if you take your eyes away from the Lord, this will not happen. You will die in the grave. Oh. Are you with me? Thou will show me the path of life. Are you following me? That right from the grave, I'm going to rise and come into an, a new order of life. Are you following me? That those who have written me off will now see me and see a new me, see a new life. <laughs> that even I myself, places where I've written myself off, are you following me? That I'll begin to start life afresh. That there will be newness. Are you following me? There are things I've thought I could never achieve in life. What place I, I thought I could never go? Are you following me? Because I, were, I was held down by the grave. He said, I'm going, to, I'm going to come out and end time to those glory. Are you with me now, my friends? Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Are we still together? Yes, thou will show me the path of life. Friends, are you ready? Are you ready? Thou will show me the path of life. Are you following me? So that means eventually this man will be set on a path called what? And that's where he's going to walk all through his life. Hey, guys, please stay with this Jesus. I'm going to show you this evening. What's the time? Are you with me? If you stay with this Jesus and focus on him, are you following me? By the time you get to this point where he says you're on the path of life, that will be your only experience. You see, <laughs> God will bring you to a place in your life that you no longer have the possibility of suffering. You don't understand? That the possibility of suffering no longer exists. Are you hearing me? That the possibility of hardship no longer exists. That the possibility of, of poverty no longer exists. I'm telling you the truth. Because you have now been translated from the grave to a path called what? The path of life. The only thing on that path is what? Life. 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 Hey. Friends, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? You see. Lazarus was bound that even when Jesus got there, don't go there, just stay on this scripture. Can you follow me? The sister said, if you had been here, you wouldn't have died. He said, if you believe, you'll see the glory of God. He said, where did they lay him? He says, Master, that even by now, it's for this, he would already be, he, he would already be stinking. Friends, can you hear me? You see, it doesn't matter if you are stinking already. Are you following me now, my friends? Because you see, guys, can you hear me? What many of is by now is already stinking? That means the situation is no longer, it has become an impossibility, it has become an embarrassment. Nothing can be done about it again. Like, it is now a complete write off. You see, people might have written you off. Are you hearing me? Even you yourself might have written you off concerning anything. Yourself off. Are you hearing me? Oh, but when Jesus steps in, Lazarus can come out of the grave and begin to walk freely. Are you with me? You see, as a child of God, you must build your mind to not write yourself off or write anybody else. Are you following me? Because people can go from the grave to the path of life. Are you hearing me now, my friend? By now, it stinks. By now, it stinks. Maybe assuming you came before he died, when he was to, to take his last breath, maybe you'll have woken him up, you'll have not made him die. Or maybe you, if you came immediately, he died. You could have raised him. Or if he came five hours after he died, or four hours, or maybe even one day. But four days, he said, by now, he stinks. You see, some of you have stayed too long in your hardship, in your sufferings, are you following me? That you think that by now, he stinks. Nothing can be done again. And even when the Lord, even when the word, word of the Lord is coming to you, that if you believe, you see, you see the glory of God. Are you following me? You are, you are still saying, by now, it stinks. 
Can you say by now is things? You see, that statement is a statement of one who has completely written off a situation. You see? So, because it was now the fourth day, are you following me? And that really by now is things. Are you following me? The possibility of resurrection no longer existed in the mind of Miriam Matter. Are you following me? You've been looking at yourself that for I've been in all of this for so long, and even I've been a Christian, I've been going to church. That maybe I just serve God in this hardship. Maybe I just serve God in this suffering and just be holy and go to heaven. Jesus Christ says no. He says Lazarus will comfort. He says you will live again. I say he says you will live again. He said you will live again. Are you hearing me? The Lord says that what? You will live again. Because thou will show me the path of life. Guys, are we ready this evening? Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Thou will show me the path of life. Like, you are going to pick me from the grave and begin to make me walk in a path called the path of life. Are you following me? Are we ready now, my friends? Can you say the path of life? So, there is something called the path of life. Are you hearing me? Life has a path. Oh, guys, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I said that what? Life has a path. Hmm? Life does what? Life has a path. And you don't stumble upon this path. Are you following me? You don't walk, walk, walk by mistake. You don't come into this path. Many people are not on this path. Are you hearing me? Even some Christians are nowhere on this path. Because you don't come to this path accidentally by accident. Are you with me? You don't stumble upon this path. Are you with me? You don't know the path. This path is shown to you. Only God knows the route. Only God knows this path. Because he created a path. Are you following me? So this path has to be shown to you. Are you with me? That will show me the path of life. Life has a path. Are you following me? There's a way God has written your life to play out. Are you following me? What God has written about your life, are you following me? His plans for you, what he has written in your books, is the path of life for you. Are you following me? Are you following me now, my friend? The path of life is life as God intends it for you. The path of life is doing life, living life as God asks it. As God lives it, as God intends. Are you following now, my friends? Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Praise God. I said that what? The path of life is what? Is living life as God has it, as God has written it. Are you following me? You see, Jesus found the path of life. Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. I said that what? Jesus found the path of life. He was shown the path of life. Are you following me? Because in that Hebrews it says that what? I have come in the volume of books. It is written of me. Are you following me? So Jesus was walking in this life according to what was what? Written about him. That is the path of life. So Jesus did not live a wasted life. He didn't live life a far sadly. Are you following me? Nothing entered into Jesus' journey that was not part of the book. Are you following me? Praise God. Nothing mistakenly came to Jesus' life or happened to him that was not part of what was written. Are you following me now, my friends? Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. 
I have come in the volume of books. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. <laughs> are, you, are you following me? And one of the things that was in the volume of books, are you following me? You see, when we read our scriptures, we only think of his suffering and his death and all of that. Are you following me? One of the things in that book was that great people will serve him with their resources. Are you following me? The Bible talks about, is in Luke chapter 8. Talk about the many women, are you following me? And various people who took care of him and his disciples with their resources. Are you following me? Are you with me? You are too, you are looking dull. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Amen. So, you see, when we read that scripture, we only think of is death. Death, suffering. Are we together? But I have come as it written of me in the volume of books. So, one of the things in the book was that it will ride a donkey, a cause that nobody has ever ridden before. <laughs> Are you following me? Tien nylon. <laughs> Can you say tier nylon? That Jesus will use a tier nylon Lincoln Navigator. Are you following me? That Jesus will use a tier nylon private jet that nobody has used before. Are you with me? Are you with me? Shout hallelujah. Amen. Are we still together? That great people would, some, would, would come to Jesus and serve him with their resources. Are you with me now, my friends? Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Are we still together? Amen. Praise God. That, that it would happen that crowds will put their clothes on the floor. Are you following me? For the donkey that Jesus Christ was riding to step on. Are you with me? That there will be such glorious ovation and fame about the Lord Jesus. Are we still together now? Are we still together? Praise Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Are we still together? And eventually, he will resurrect and be given a name that is what? Above every other name. It's one of what was written in the book, so. Are you following me? But don't forget, before the ultimate glory came, are you following me? He passed through the grave. I will now, my friends. Praise Jesus evermore. So, Jesus was led in the path of life. He journeyed in life according to the script of God for him. Are you with me? Guys, there's a script God has written about your life. Are you with now, my friends? Come on. Shout hallelujah. You see, you know that in movies, praise God, when you're watching a movie, sometimes you have the bad side, you now have the good side. You see, it's now time for you to enter the good part of the script. Every part of God's script is good though. But it's time for you to enter that sweet part. Every part is good, but not every part is sweet. Huh? Are you hearing me? Praise God forevermore. Every part of the script of God is what? Is good, but not every part is what? Is sweet. But you see, this, when they begin to show you the part of life, are you following me now, my friends? You are beginning to come into the sweet part of your script. Are we together now? Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Amen. So, that will show me the part of life. That you from the grave, you from that small place, you from that hardship, you from that suffering, now step into that place where you are now living life as God has ordained. Are you following me? Where you are now acting out the good part of the, the sweet part of God's script over your life. Are you, are you now, are you, are you together? 
Where you are now beginning to live as a king. Are you following me? Where you are now beginning to reign in life. Praise Jesus. You are now what? Beginning to what? To reign in life. Are we still together now? Shout hallelujah. Amen. Are we together? Glory to Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. The place of difficulty. From that place of hardship. Are you with me? From that place of suffering. That you now step into a new order of life. Are we together? That you do what? You step into a new order of life. You will enter the sweet parts of the story. Are you following now my friends? And he says that these can only happen by the hand of God. Praise God. That what? These can only happen by the hand of God. He says, Thou will show me the path of life. Amen. Are we still together? So you see, it means that the path of life, are you with me? What has been written about you, are you with me now, my friends? Are we together? See, can I talk to you? You will not let my soul stay in the grave and all of that. Going to the grave. It's also part of the book, so. Are you following me? I'm now talking of the sweet part. Praise God. I'm going to talk about what? The sweet part of the book. Because it's going to the grave. Are you following me? All of the sufferings and all of that is part of the book. But there's a sweet part of the book which is entrance into what? Into glory. Are we together now? So you see, that sweet life you want, that great life you want, is only possible by what? By the hand of God. Are you following me? When I mean that great life, I'm talking of the greatness that God has written about you. Are we together? The beautiful thing that God has written about you, the great life God has written about you, is only possible how? By the hand of God. You don't stumble into it. Are you with me? You don't what? You don't stumble into it. You are led into it. Are we together? You are what? You are led into that path. Are we together? And you will only be led into that path because you have set your focus on the Lord. I have said the Lord always before me. Don't forget. Are we together now? Praise Jesus forevermore. You can plug it directly. Praise God. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Are we still together? Glory to Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Amen. So, that you don't, st- you don't stumble into good thought sex. Are you following me? You know what? You don't stumble into good success. Success as God has it and success as God has written it about you. Are you following me now, my friends? You don't stumble into the greatness of God. Are you following me? You don't mistakenly enter that one day, one day, you, you, you don't become great like that. According to God has written it, it's not true. He has to show you that path. Are you with me now, my friends? When you begin to live life, I'm talking of the sweet part. Oh. Are you following me? As God intends. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. And it says, it can happen right from the grave. Are we together? Now right from the grave, it can what? It can happen. Are we still together now? Great to Jesus forevermore. Jesus. 
Shout hallelujah. So what did I say? That, what did I say? That you can rise from the grave, step into the glorious life that God has planned for you. Are we together? That right from your lowest point, hmm? right from where? From your lowest point. From your lowest point, you can step into the height of God's greatness, of God's plan of greatness for your life. That, you see, it doesn't have to be step by step. Are you with me? This is the meaning of he picking the poor from the dust. The needy from what? From the dung eel. And said them to sit what? On thrones with princes. Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Are we still together? Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Amen. So that right from the lowest point, because you see the grave is the lowest point of a man's life. Hmm? That right from the lowest point of your life, as long as your focus is set, is set on the Lord rather, as long as your eyes are fixed on the Lord. Are we together? That right from the lowest point of your life, are you following me? That God can pick you. Are you following me? And set you upon your high places. That God can do what? Pick you and set you upon your high places. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. For thou will show me the path of life. Glory to Jesus. For thou what? For thou will show me the path of life. Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand. They are pleasures forevermore. Praise Jesus forevermore. Are we still together? Thou will show me that right from the grave you're going to pick me up and set me upon my high places. They are going to work out your plans for my life. You're going to bring me into largesse. Are you following me? You're going to bring me into... That success, that good success that you have written about me. Are you following me? Because the part of life is opposite to the grave. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? That you see, that you're going to have an experience, are you following me? That once this happens to you, when God picks you from the grave and sets you on the part of life, you begin to have experiences that are contrary to what you've been through. That are the opposite. Are you following me? That if sickness was to experience, you now begin to experience what? Health. If it was poverty, what begin to experience? Wealth, riches. Do you understand? That you now be totally cut off from the experience of the grave. Are you with me now, my friend? That God has a plan to what? To totally cut you off from what? From the experience of the grave. And I mean it's total. Are you with me now, my friends? Praise Jesus evermore. Thou will show me Thou will show me the path of life. 